All right, let's talk about Port Adelaide uh, against the Dogs. This was Friday night at Marvel. Yeah, well, I mean, they're just playing great footy, aren't they? There's Finlayson there, late in the game. He shushes the crowd, and it took me back to Brody Grundy against Port Adelaide. I thought, oh, that may come back to get them. But just, the, I mean, how tough they're playing, the way that they're moving the football with speed and forward, the depth that they've now got at selection. So there's just something uh, intangible about this, and, and that is one of the great goals that you will yeah. see when he went yeah. forward in that moment, critical stage, picks it up with the right hand, burns off three Bulldogs opponents and kicks it. So I've been hesitant to declare Port Adelaide Premiership challenges this year. I'm starting to come around with what they are doing, despite the issues that they've had in the ruck and also their undersized defence. Just a clear difference between the way Port Adelaide ended their forward 50 to the way the Bulldogs did. It was clean, it was efficient. And how happy is Ken at the moment? So how long until they sign him up? Because this is, it's good to see, down on the bench and just somebody <laughs> yeah. with emotion, showing emotion, hugging his players. And uh, he's on top of the world at the moment, Kenny. Yeah, well, they've always said this year, the August time frame, I think they will stick to that. But if, if this continues, you're going to be a brave club to not re-sign yeah. It would be rare for a team to make the finals and for the coach to be sacked at the end of the year. They're clearly going to make finals. They'll probably make top four. They only need to win five out of the last ten for that demo. And as clubs have found historically, if you've got a guy who's still got the players, as mm. he still does in year 11 of his coaching tenure, regardless of outcome this year, mm. it's, it's something you want to retain rather than checking the, the landscape without him. Different story for Luke Beveridge though, TJ. I think he needs to be uh, under pressure and as we've spoken about a number of times, he looked a little bit confused and lost and bemused almost on Friday night. It's like he's got this great shiny sports car that he just doesn't know what petrol to put in it. Like he's putting the wrong fuel in this car. He's got all Australians everywhere. He's got English. Where'd he's you got Bonds and Pelly. Well, it's, it's a metaphor, TJ, because mm. you, you look at it, he's got everything that he needs. Every list base is covered. Yeah, but he's putting diesel instead of high-powered <laughs> fuel into it. Like, what is going on? I think on? he's a Carlton, mate. And, and the, um, the decision to sign him before they needed to is, is an interesting one. I has he got a back line? No, he doesn't have a back line. As it stands what at the moment, they're in the back line. It's always, oh, he doesn't have the key position players. Well, you get Jones, who's been extraordinary for them. Mm. You get Lobb. Yeah, They've been. topped up with this group. He's got everything that he needs, but he can't come up with a formula and a defensive structure that can So are you compete. saying they should have let him say out this season hey, like no, Port Adelaide no did? way they should have re-signed him when they did. I mean, would you re-sign him now? Well, I, I said at the time, I, I felt that with two grand finals inside his eight completed seasons of footy, and again, I'm not... I, know, but so if he was I, I out, felt it was the right decision to if make. If he was really out of contract now, would just, you re-sign him now? I, again, would I think you wait? He, he's a good coach. He's made two grand finals in eight seasons. Yeah, but I, mean, I, I think they're hard to make. Can you imagine if Sam Mitchell or Ross Lyon had this list, what they would produce. But that's my point. He needs but, to settle them down. That's is what he, he maximising this list? He needs to settle them down, uh, TJ. That's my opinion yeah. on it. Um, so every Thursday night, I'm just bemused by selection. What's he going to do this week? That, that's what frustrates me about it. It's that the players are there, but all players ask for is confidence in the role that they're being given. And the amount of different players that roll through this back line. So Gardner and O'Brien get dropped and Bruce and Keith come in. Bruce and Keith were awful on the weekend. Bruce, how, how he was selected to pick play on Charlie Dixon looked uncomfortable. How O'Donnell was picked to play in that back line when he was forward line the week before. How Lobb's picked on a wing, then he's forward the next week. Why is McRae playing on the half forward flank when he's always been a great winger and a midfielder? There's too many things that Luke does that just, I don't think, gives players confidence in themselves. So the players are there. But why does he need to try and invent, reinvent the wheel, which confuses the dogs? So good teams are settled in what they do, and the dogs have too many things he throws up that are confusing. It's strong stuff, Lord. Brandy, the, the midfield operations and machinations, they get plenty of it. They yeah. always get plenty of it. Are you doubtful too as to the effect? Well, the effect where they go inside their forward 50. So they win enough football. And Marcus Bontempelli's efforts, I'm leaving him out of that because his ball use is outstanding. But outside Marcus Bontempelli, the ball use by their midfielders leaves a bit to be desired because you've got forwards who can mark the football. Nah, uh, Norton, Jamara, you've got Rory Lobb. But just the entries were so different to what Port Adelaide's entries were. Gold Coast three weeks ago, plus 21 inside 50s. They couldn't get the job done. Again against Geelong last week, more inside 50s. Couldn't get the job done. So it's not a lack of intent. It's not a lack of work. They're really working hard, but they just can't execute. Trelaw had 13 touches in the last quarter for minus 17 metres gained and didn't have a kick in that. He kicked it at 22% for the night. So big numbers, and they all get big numbers but the yep. effect, to, to back up your point, is, is not there. OK, we'll talk about that again uh, a little later on, but uh, terrific stuff, Lord. Uh, great analysis and uh, food for thought for the Western Bulldogs.